Good afternoon and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, I'm Bob Cabana and it's a real privilege for us here at Kennedy to host NASA's kickoff of the Agency Innovation Mission. I want to personally thank the NASA FIRST team for the superb job that they did in pulling this all together. I also want to thank uh, Kennedy's spaceport integrators for the great job they've done in helping us make uh, NASA's Kennedy's days of innovation so successful. Innovation is inherent in all that we do. It's critical to our success. It's who we are. And it's my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker. She is the champion for innovation at NASA and also our deputy administrator, Dr. David Newman. She is truly one of us. She earned her bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering at Notre Dame in her PhD in aerospace biomedical engineering from MIT and has been actively involved in space research for America's space program throughout her career. As the Apollo professor of astronautics at MIT, she shared her passion for space and innovation with all of her students, and we are blessed to have her as our deputy administrator. So please join me in welcoming Dr. David Newman. Thank you. And, and also, this weekend, go Navy, beat Notre Dame. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hello, how's everyone? And uh, thank you so much, KSC. Thank you, Director Cabana. Um, go, go, go Irish, beat Navy. <laughs> so, hello, NASA innovators. It's great to be with you here today. I want to um, second the thanks to all the firsters, the first cohort. Can we give them a round of applause, please? For <laughs> all across the agency, if you just read everything that's happening at every center, it's so incredible. I was so excited uh, flying down here to look at one to two to three days of innovation across the agency. That's really why we're here, is to celebrate, to celebrate our people, celebrate all of you. You have so many great ideas, and uh, we want to listen, we want to raise them up, we want to say, uh, we're already great, but we want to even be better. How can, how can we be innovative? How can we intentionally really be as excellent as we want to be? And um, so it's just my honor when, when I joined uh, all of you at NASA, and, and Administrator Bolden asked me to be in charge of the big T for technology. I listened to you. A couple weeks later, I came back and I said, can that be technology and innovation? I think we have to concentrate on innovation. Charlie embraced it, and uh, ever since, I've been working with you all and learning from you all about all the great things going on at NASA. And again, just glad to, with all of you, have this responsibility. How can we even lift ourselves up? So today, it's really my pleasure to, to speak with everyone a little bit about, first and foremost, uh, promising practices, because we're doing so many great things. And maybe a framework. How do, we, how do we be sustainable in terms of innovation? And then the going forward plan as well. So again, what are, what are, what's innovation? We all have our own mental models. Um, but what we're looking for is, is change to, again, maybe just do our work a little bit better every day. Maybe transforming things. I'm going to talk to you about this framework. But if you remember anything from today, two things. Innovation is in our DNA NASA. It's who we are. It's what we do. And second, we have to be open to continuous transformation. Change? What? That's hard. But again, I think it really is in our, in our DNA. Let's remind ourselves, let's raise ourselves up, and then open-minded to continuous transformation. So let's reflect on our, our NASA mission. It's a little audacious. To drive advances in science, technology, aeronautics, space exploration, and enhance knowledge, education, innovation, economic vitality, and stewardship of Earth. We're all up for the challenge. I know that's why we all joined NASA. And so innovation is in our mission. We have a complementary vision, and that's to reach new heights, re reveal the unknown for the benefit of all humanity. So again, that brings it right back down to humanity, and it's all about the people for me. So I think in the future, NASA's successes will be largely determined by our investment in the innovations we make in our scientific research, our technology, and our workforce and our workforce, first and, first and foremost. So thinking about the organization and having this day to just celebrate and thank everyone, and then also share some promising practices. When we called the senior leaders together and asked for promising practices, we got 80. We have 80 plus and counting today. 
So how's that for, for first responders? And that was just the promising practices coming out of all of our different centers. So again, kudos, and uh, I'm gonna share just a few of these with you. And then also see about, well, how can we have a common philosophy of innovation? That's what I've been thinking about. Again, listening to you, and um, we all have our own mental models, but what does it mean? Because innovation is for all of us. We all innovate every day, no matter what your job is at NASA, every way contributing to all of our, our missions. So want to pose a, a bit of a framework for you here. Again, this is from listening. Everyone is innovating, and so you start with continuous. That's just doing everything better each day. Can you do it more efficiently? Can you look at it a different way? 80% of innovation comes with continuous innovation, using existing technologies and in existing organizational structures. But we can transform. We can be disruptive in terms of disrupting the organization, a new way to partner. It can be revolutionary, thinking, what are the revolutionary technologies? What are those transformational technologies that will get us to Mars? And since we always like a big challenge, let's do both at the same time. What transformational innovation has, let's transform the organization and the technology at the same time. So in getting ready for today's celebration, I'm thinking, okay, is this a kind of a common philosophy, a framework that we can talk about? And all ideas are great ideas. All of your ideas are great, especially the wild, crazy ones. Those are the ones that I like because they make me think differently. They challenge, you know, my assumptions. So saying yes to these great ideas, just giving a green light to everybody to say, yeah, what are those crazy ideas? Now, you know, we have constraints, of course, the budgets, what can we feel? But just saying, you know, making NASA a yes zone, green light for bring in all your ideas. So it's kind of like a portal. At the continuous innovation, then, that's just constantly searching for improvements as I say, both in our organization and in our technology. So just kind of asking ourselves, how can I do it more efficiently? How can I do it more effectively today? So out of those 80 plus counting promising practices across all of NASA, I'll highlight a few. So this continuous organization, our digital learning networks. What they do is using state-of-the-art communications, really scaling up and delivering that content to, you know, not just hundreds and thousands, but tens of thousands of learners out there sharing, you know, what we're doing at NASA, again, with the teachers and outreach and the public, engaging everyone with that learning network. So look at all those kids. Again, each one of these little ones we get, I say that's a win. I count each student, you know, one by one, and I call them the Mars generation. If they're in school today, they're the Mars generation, because we'll be boots on Mars in the 2030s. So I'm counting you know, everything we do, I think, in this you know, audience is for the next generation. It's for all of our early career folks, the firsters, but all of our, you know, it's for them, because you're going to be the ones who, who realize this. So we need to facilitate all of this for you. So again, continually learning. I put mission STEM up here. Hope you all know about our mission STEM, so diversity and inclusion. Putting this up there, the innovation here is, you know, having the website Promising practices, this goes to all of our grantees, all of our grantees to hold them accountable to, do you have welcoming environments? What are you doing about diversity and inclusion? I learned something from, from actually from the, the 50th anniversary of Star Trek from Gene Roddenberry recently, if you've seen my blog. Infinite diversity and infinite inclusion. I mean, how foresighted was that when you wrote that? Infinite diversity, infinite co in combinations. Infinite diversity, infinite combinations. That's what I'm after, because I'm after excellence. And the only way I know how to get excellence is through the most diverse workforce, of all diversity of all kinds. Gender, culture, intellect, because all I know is I don't want to be surrounded by people that are just like me. How boring would that be? A whole bunch of you know, rocket engineers, right? So I need everyone to challenge me and you know, think differently. So I think, again, these are, these are great examples. We've held this um, Mission STEM conference for all of our grantees, brought them to headquarters, and really challenged them. And now we're executing in terms of the action and holding folks compliant as well to make sure that we're all working in environments that we want to do. So moving on to disruptive. OK, there's great examples here. Again, dozens and dozens. I've just picked out a few to highlight when we really intentionally are changing the organization. We are disrupting and we're transforming ourselves. So our commercial crew activities are a great example right here at the Kennedy Space Center. All of our centers working together on this, partnering, public-private partnerships, buying services, very new model, different way to do business. It's incredibly innovative, incredibly transformative, and we're getting it done. Coming up now, commercial crew, not just the cargo. 
Another example, what about citizen science? I know I jump on these websites, but again, opening up our story to the world, saying, hey world, you need to discover planets and name stars, and uh, down on the bottom right, Jupiter, right? The Juno camp, opening it up to the world, say, where do you want to look when we're, when we're exploring Jupiter? Make sure that people know that they are included and they can help us get our work done. So again, just thinking about things differently, being very inclusive and disrupting kind of what we've done before in terms of the organization. Moving over to the technologies. So many great examples, just a few. Intentionally, really thinking about what are the breakthrough technologies that we need to do some of our missions. So a few examples here and a shout out to aeronautics, of course. This is revolutionary, transformative in terms of technology investment into our X-planes. We are back in business in X-planes and as you see here, you know we're doing low boom supersonic. We're doing ultra efficient. How about that for a goal? 50% fuel reduction and 50% less noise. So that's where we look at the future of how can we really do the innovation to really be transformative for flight. On the bottom there are hybrid electric. So all these investments in the research and technology to really transform the way we do things. James Webb Space Telescope, it's supposed to be 100 times more powerful than Hubble. Dr. Mather says I can say that. Can you imagine? So we, <laughs> our Nobel laureates. <laughs> and uh, amazing, 18 articulating controlled mirrors, phenomenal. Just, you know, get built, ready to launch in 2018. So these really are revolutionary technologies. And then if we go for the gusto, which I think we're doing, and uh, we're focused on this, then again, kind of transforming the organization and as well as the technology at the same time. Some of my favorite examples on International Space Station, 16 years, change in organizations, partnerships. We've worked with 95 different nations, our five main partners on International Space Station, but this is truly global exploration. And uh, Kate Rub Rubens just came down, shout out for Kate, she landed safely. Just one of the experiments, the DNA sequencing in real time, over two billion base pairs sequenced. Now, as of today, we can sequence in real time DNA in microgravity. Completely you know, revolutionary, really, really awesome. And we'll continue to go because again, we're looking how to keep our astronauts safe and healthy for the future, even longer durations and, and getting us to Mars. Exoplanets. Now these blow my mind, right? 20 years ago, this wasn't even a, a discipline. We didn't have this. So going out and searching for these Earth-like planets, these exoplanets, I just put up this uh, wonderful image because we haven't ever seen them. So we brought in the artists. Help us, help us envision what these exoplanets even look like. And uh, so Kepler-16b, you know, move over. Luke Skywalker, this is a binary sun system, two suns. And so you do have a double shadow when you're on Kepler-16b. But again, searching for other habitable planets? Are we alone in the universe? Those incredibly enduring questions that we need to innovate, we need to keep ourselves sharp so that we really, again, doing the impossible, we, we just make it possible here at NASA every day. Incredibly transformative. And um, our journey to Mars, I think it will take both transformative in terms of the organizational business model change as well as in the technologies. We're well on our way, if you look at this, um, schematic here, Earth Reliant. We're already on International Space Station for 16 years. We're learning so much. We'll be there till 2024. We move into CIS Lunar with SLS, launching two years, less than two years, right here from Kennedy Space Center. It's going to be amazing. You know, the world's first heavy lift launch vehicle. Move over Saturn V, right? When that rockets into space and gets us to that uh, lunar looking back to Earth, or it's going to be amazing. We'll prove all the technologies. These are, some of them are transformative, some of them are revolutionary technologies. We need to learn how to live and work in deep space. And then phase three, moving on to, to Mars. So again, we're all in. We're all in in terms of the innovation it will take, in terms of to transform ourselves, but working, of course, with our partners, our private partners, and our international partners, too, to share in this, this big global vision. So kind of back to. Uh, then back to this framework that says, well, you know, how can we, how can we always be thinking of it, always be on top of how are we creating a culture of innovation uh, with all of our people saying, all of your ideas are good ideas, how can you help us with, with our missions? And um, 
it's been fun for me to go to every center and just listen to all of you. You fill me with, with hope, you fill me with good ideas. I can barely write them all down. And then again, how in turn then can we facilitate? Here today, we have the Kickstarter coming up and uh, each center is doing so much. And let me tell you, just those little investments, just a little bit of investments to tell people your ideas are great and um, don't know which ones are gonna hit. So we need to place investments in a lot of them. And we also have to be comfortable with failure. That's tough, that's tough. Right? So we fail smart, call it, out of our human capital, really the culture. How can we fail smart appropriately? We need hands-on life cycle experience. And then if you fail, so what? We get back up and we do it again. But again, in terms of being intentional about it, but being able to, to take the risks that we really do see. So our goal is, is twofold then. The way we look at it, we're doing very well. Again, here to say thank you to, to everyone and trying to keep, to identify the opportunities that unleash our discovery, advancement, and our innovation. A moment for a pause, why? Because again, we are intending to send humans to Mars in the 2030s, so we need these breakthroughs. We need these scientific, technological, and organizational breakthroughs. I think we're well on our way. It is about finding our place in the universe. It is about flying cleaner, greener, safer, quieter aircraft of the future. Making that round the world trip uh, six hours on cleaner fuel, I can't wait. And so when we look at all these goals for innovation, in order um, to reach these, kind of show a culture of innovation at NASA, we have three guiding principles. First and foremost, thank you and acknowledge our history of innovation, in which all the NASA workforce should be celebrating, a little bit more positive reinforcement. If someone has a good idea, your colleague, uh, please you know, pat them on the back, take them out for coffee, just listen to them, but make sure to congratulate them on doing a great job each and every day. And then second, have this broad definition of innovation because it includes everyone. It includes all of us, regardless of what our role is. It really includes every single one of us to think about this continuous, disruptive, transformative, and revolutionary type of innovation. So we have a common philosophy and we're all on this, you know, we're on this ship together. Spaceship Earth, I call it. My favorite planet, Mars is number two, just in case I, I haven't mentioned that. Um, and third, then really are moving away from, from the, you know, failure's not an option. That, that was uh, had its time in Apollo 13, and thank goodness we got the crew back uh, safely, amazing. But now, you know, in the new NASA, you know, and moving out, also saying, no, it's, it's okay that, uh, you know, we're, we're not perfect, we're gonna intend, we learn so much more from our failure, get back up, it's hard, it's challenging. Uh, that's a really important message, I think, that we all, you know, need to communicate with one another. And um, then again, kind of being dedicated to kind of this new wave of open-minded uh, folks that are in the agency and want to do things differently. And then as supervisors, supervisors as well, with great training programs like LASER, what, what does it take? A lot of today, there's a lot of training going on to say, okay, where what training do we need? It'll be modular. We'll share it across the whole center. And they're actually a lot of fun as well. But again, being very intentional about it, the training, the different opportunities that, that we all seek. So we're on that, and we're starting to lay out some today. And thank you for everyone's great work. And I um, want to kind of show you a summary here. So this is a picture of our, of just uh, since 2011, NASA's you know innovation visual history, if you will. And um, there was a document and barriers to innovation and uh, you know people are are anxious and want to get going and that's fine we've identified those but we've been on the recommendation working working these recommendations can we be you know a more innovative culture and uh, lean forward feel smart right getting you know celebrating that celebrating people's great work and then the agency culture strategy that came out comes out of human capital recognizing and rewarding you know kind of developing these supervisors training for people so we march all along and then we actually did have a a bit of a, a bit of a burial let's rest in peace of those those barriers let's not go back and say oh but here's the barrier say no we are moving forward we're moving on the senior management council we got together in may and that's again why i'm so glad to be here uh just six months later saying yes let's have an innovation day let's celebrate our people let's learn from one another let's celebrate all of these great promising practices that we already know are going on and uh, kind of hold ourselves accountable so the actions and what we're working on from that um, first, the, the chief and the deputy center technologist, as well as with headquarters, they're taking the lead to develop agency-wide process to match ideas for employees for what opportunities for innovation that you have to 
solve these problems. So we're on it, but we're expanding the network, also empowering, so there really are leaders in each of your centers all over the agency to, to go to, to say, look for these innovative, innovative solutions uh, for NASA, if they're identified by leadership, if they're identified by any of you, to really kind of build that networking and our innovative culture. Second, in terms of leading and celebrate building the efforts from the mission directors to foster innovation, Lisa Rose on this one, she's leading it with a great team. All the, the AAs from our mission directors as well as center directors have been involved and we're calling this leading questions for projects to encourage innovation. So that the goal is to continually look, continually look for ways within our current missions that enable future missions to make NASA even greater and more capable than we are today. The mission directorates and all the project leaders already do this. We're capturing engineering research data to inform future design decisions. We're looking for new ways to reduce mission costs. Other incentives for demonstrating new technologies and advanced cross-cutting technologies that can support missions of the future. And Lisa's helping us consider how we can use that in terms of our project management reviews and highlight these innovative approaches. So that'll be coming forward for, for agency review and, and spelled out. So again, when we have new projects, new programs, just right, right up front, what are the leading questions on innovation we should be asking? Could we do it differently? Could we do it differently? What are the other ideas we need to bring, bring in right from the beginning of our project? And programs. And then third, the, the innovation framework, which is I've had the, the uh, fun and the pleasure to try to put together maybe a common philosophy or framework that we can all talk about. If we think strategically, then where should we be investing? Where do we want those transformations and breakthroughs to come from? So at the end of the day, we want to celebrate the many, many positive things that we have going on at NASA. We want to be very inclusive. We want to foster this culture that allows people to take risks. And yes, learn from those. We learn so much more from those. And mostly it's about all of you and uh, my pleasure to have joined you and work with you. And uh, the people at the biggest asset of NASA, even though I love the rockets and the technology, it's the people. It's all of you. The biggest asset we have is, is one another. And um, so my pleasure to, to have worked with you, continue to work with you, and say, uh, you know, again, Let's do our absolute best because and the innovation is in our DNA and let's be proud about that every day and, and celebrate it and move further and make NASA, you know, envision. We have great dreams for the future and I just say, you know, we always make the impossible possible. We make it easy. It's not easy. I know it's not easy, but that's what we do every day. So I thank all of you. I thank you for your innovation and uh, that's who we are at NASA. Happy to answer any questions. I think we have a Q&A time now. Thank you so much. So questions can be uh, submitted virtually at larc.cnf.io. And our first question for Deva is, what would you like to see change within the agency that would have a positive impact on innovation? A little time, like, okay, <laughs> I'm all set. So it was one of the first, the question was one of the first things I'd like to see. For in change within the agency and have a positive impact on in innovation. Yeah, so the change with innovation, uh, change within the agency, again, I think, it, I think I'd point right down to that kind of continuous. Again, just um, not to underestimate, just the intentional kind of those slow changes every day thinking about how we can do it a little bit better. I think it'll have a huge, and I already know we've already started it, it's going on. It's, it does have a huge impact on the agency in terms of being, being innovative, but we have to celebrate it. You know, we have to celebrate it. We need a little bit more positive reinforcement. And uh, I'd add to that, just say yes. If you're a supervisor of one, per, one person, of 17,000 people, say yes. Please say yes. Make it, make it the yes zone. That'll have the most important impact, I think, because guess what? You'll get that innovative idea, and you'll get hundreds more. But the moment we say no, we never hear back from that person. So I want to make NASA the yes zone, and I think we're well on our way to doing that. The next question, question is, can you explain the importance of STEAMed instead of just STEM? Yeah, thank you for that question <laughs> out there. So uh, you probably heard me speak before. So STEM education, we Charlie and I say, and a lot of the leaders that were, you know, 
19 plus billion dollar agency for STEM. We want to do everything we can for the U.S. workforce in science, technology, engineering, math. We want to lift everyone up. We, we need you all. We need to do that for the nation, I believe. But I think as an engineer, I can put it on, on us, especially as a former academic. We have to change the conversation. We made STEM a thing. So I go and I talk to little girls and boys and, and they'll tell me, oh, STEM, that's not for me. So I know that we failed as soon as someone tells me STEM, that's not for me. Because it is for everyone. NASA's for everyone, I think. And I want to raise up our STEM capabilities in the US. So how do you do that? So I have a, I have a hypothesis and I'm beta testing it on folks now. I've called it STEAMED, to be inclusive. I bring in the arts. Because those exoplanets you saw, guess what? The artists needed to paint those pictures because we haven't ever seen them. They need to tell the history. Artists, the humanities have always been with us at NASA. There are colleagues at work because they paint the pictures, they tell the stories, they help us communicate. I tweet now, right? Because I want to communicate to the world. D is for the, the 3D uh, maker generation. Because the next generation, I always do this. So how many people have, a, have done, you know, done 3D printing? Probably, that's always a lot of, well, you know, half the folks here at NASA. I have my own 3D printer. <laughs> um, but that's a whole new generation. So D, if they see themselves as a maker, then I say you're in. So changing the conversation to be very inclusive, saying that we're all in, I think will actually have the best effect on STEM and explicitly changing the conversation. You don't have to be the best in math, calculus, and physics. That was, I was, that's what I was told. And that's really intimidating so we don't have many. If we change the conversation to say, you want to build rockets, you want to get us to Mars, you want to search for other planets, you want to invent the coolest planes for tomorrow, yes to all that, then we assure their success. They're just tools. You have to study math, chemistry, physics, sure, but they're just tools. And so I like that, you know, in terms of changing the conversation to be very inclusive and then you know, putting on us on so we need to assure those little folks success. We need that generation, and then we'll have an enormous impact, I think, in the STEM workforce. So we have time for one more question. What do you see as the go forward plan for NASA's innovation? The going forward plan. So um, at KSC, there's been innovation days for now for I think six years running, but the going forward plan, let's be sustainable. Again, there are great ideas there. I think we definitely can be sustainable. Working across centers though, we do need to scale some things up. The things that are ripe to be scaled up across the agency, we'd love to see those happen. So we've just, we just have a start this year, but let's keep that going. And then learning from, from each other. We have many different centers, so again, but what can we scale up? How can we work together? How can we all collaborate? And then again, in terms of a government agency, um, I'm just so proud of us. We're at, the, we're at the forefront. We're kind of running the experiment, and we're already asked by many other agencies of, hey, NASA, how do we already have best practices. So I say we just keep going with what we're doing, but be very intentional about it. So um, thank you so much, Deva, for coming today and for speaking to us all. Thank you, everybody, for submitting your questions. And also, thank you um, on behalf of our whole FIRST team for trusting us to take your idea of an agency-wide innovation day and make it into success. Um, we're going to continue our day of innovation next with the NASA Innovation Kickstart, or NICS. It'll be held live across the agency. Um, here locally, you can stay in this room to view it. We'll also have it available on your local NASA TV channel across the entire agency. So thank you, everybody, for coming, and enjoy your AIM day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.